Hello and welcome to this episode of Shoulder to Shoulder, where we strive to grow in love of the Lord and each other. I'm Megan Silas. And I'm Pam Marvin. And we are happy to be back discussing so things of the Lord. Yes, and ma'am. today we are touching on probably one of the bigger topics in the Christian life, which is prayer. That's right. Why prayer matters. Yeah, and this was the topic that you brought to the it table, is. Pam. It is, uh, and I confess, uh, it's been a few weeks now, so it's not as fresh on my mind, but I, uh, you know, I, with my little tendency to the melancholic, uh, you know, I have a person I've been praying for, with or for for more than 10 years, and there's not been any change in him coming closer to the Lord, and I battle discouragement with mm-hmm. that, right? You know, um, I go back and forth from all I'm called to do is pray for him. He could have a deathbed conversion. It could still happen. You know, God's not done with him yet and those kinds of things. Um, but sometimes it really gets, it gets in my mind about, Oh, just, you know, the evil one, just stop praying for him. What difference does it make? It doesn't seem to make a difference. I have a dear friend who has been praying for about six years for an improvement in her daughter's, um, I don't know, her mental health and disposition and it just hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And the mother's been prone to discouragement quite a bit about praying. Well, look, praying's not not working, so I don't know what to do. So then she gets a little more discouraged and despondent in her own faith, which is it's really sad. Like so it's when you don't see the results, help us to cling to our faith and to Lord and to the Lord. Yeah, and I think that statement if we don't see the results Mm -hmm. is the important thing to remember because you said nothing's happening yeah i've been praying for 10 years and nothing's happening how do you know you don't know Uh, only only outward exterior like of the world not of heaven right I want to tell a little story because it just came to mind as you were talking um that's sort of an maybe an analogy uh so i have this picture that hangs in my bathroom it's actually a beautiful um like hand done uh sort of calligraphy version of the love is patient love is kind uh chap verse Mm -hmm. uh, that was given to me by a friend so it hangs in my bathroom and it's been hanging there for a couple years now and just the other day i went to the bathroom and it had fallen down off the entire wall or just the picture no, inside fortunate, the frame listen no off the wall off where it was hanging but oh. the fortunate thing is and god is so good because i would have been very sad if it had broken there's a towel rack right beneath it and when it fell it fell onto the towel rack and didn't fall onto the floor oh. but the interesting thing about it is i had hung it with a metal picture hanger that's kind of like those, you you know, you nail it in and it's got a little hook. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the hook and it had bent down. So basically I hadn't chosen a strong enough uh, gauge hook for the weight of that image, that, that frame. So basically what was happening is slowly over time, the hook was straightening out Mm. until one day it got just straight enough so that it could no longer hold the frame and the frame fell. Wow. I had no idea that over the course of the two plus years that it's been hanging there, that slowly it has been dropping. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality I think that exists sometimes in prayer there are changes that are happening that are imperceptible to us, but he knows they're happening. And a mm-hmm. lot of the times the prayer, we talk about how prayer doesn't change God, it changes us. Right. Every time we go into prayer for another, when we go into intercessory prayer, we're acknowledging that God has power we don't. And that act of trust matters regardless of what happens I'll say that that one more time because I think that's a real pivotal point in the conversation every time we go into intercessory prayer 
we acknowledge that God has power that we don't. Mm -hmm. That humility, that trust, that faith that grows within us, that's really powerful. And it's something the enemy wants to battle more than anything else. And the way that he does that is to try to tell you nothing's happening, nothing's happening. You know, and he'll get... He'll get at it a whole bunch of different ways that I think we can talk about because one way he'll try to get it at it is, well, you just don't have enough faith. You're not, you know, you're not praying well enough. Or you're not believing hard enough. Or that sometimes he's like, God doesn't care. He's not listening to you. Mm. Or then Insane. he might even go really even for the kill. There's no God. There's mm. no power. Do you have it? Does that ever happen with you? I mean, I, I can kind of come up with some of mine, but like what? what? Um, well, the little lies that start to pop up in our head when we are, you know, praying for a long time for a certain holy intention. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to clarify that. Obviously it's a holy intention. Conversion generally mm -hmm. is one of the, I think one of the, the bigger things we should always be praying for in, in our loved ones, um, you know, or healing, Mm -hmm. of different kinds from addiction or illness or whatever. And I think you're right. Like, I think um, the deceiver kind of comes and says, well, you know, yeah, your faith isn't that great. Oh, oh, I know. I know what it is. Yeah. You don't have a gift of intercessory prayer. <laughs> I get that. You don't have a, a you know, the gift of healing prayer. Yeah. You know, some people have mm -hmm. a real gift for that. Like sure. their charism is yeah. one of healing charisms. Mm -hmm. And I've known people like that and it's pretty incredible. And I've always like, Oh, I want that one too, Lord. You right. know, cause, but it doesn't really work out that way. And so, um, I have a little lie that it lies. Well, you're just, you're just not worthy enough to receive those gifts. You're just not, that's not for you. Yeah. Oof, oof. I don't even yeah, want to say that loud because that's definitely a lie I hear. Yeah. And another one is, um, I think, well, you're not really asking this for the good of the other person. Mm. You just want to be able to say, well, I prayed for it and it happened. It's all your pride. Mm. It's just your pride that you want it to happen. Like my you, power. It's not really charity that you're mm. praying out of. It's just your own pride. And there's just, I mean, I think we could probably spend half an hour talking about all the ways the enemy can get in there and, and tell us these lies. And I think the point of it, the more important point is to say, if the enemy has so many tactics to try to get in there, there's a reason. And it's because he knows there's power in it. Mm, mm, okay. You know? And so I think that's the evidence that it does matter. It matters incredibly. And the Lord showed us that it matters. How many examples do we have in scripture of Jesus praying for people, praying for individuals, but praying even for groups of people, you know, I'm, I've shared it many times. One of my favorite scenes in the Bible is when Jesus stands and he looks over Jerusalem. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times I've desired to gather you the way a hen gathers its chicks, but you would not have it. And that gets to the other point. There's what God desires and then there's our own will That's and right. the will of others. And the fact that as much as Jesus would like to gather all to him, mm -hmm. he will not force it. And so when we get into this idea that, well, if I just pray hard enough, if I just pray with enough faith, if I just trust, it'll happen. Well, there's still another person involved, you know, and, and maybe the person wants their own healing but, and you think, oh, well, they're not, you know, getting in the way, but there's a lot more factors involved than just our desires. Mm -hmm. And that reality of what is God seeing in the whole thing? Right. Well, you said something also too, before we started, that was had pretty big impact on me about this too, is like when you are praying for something in particular, say, um, an emotional healing mm -hmm. in particular. Um, and you've been doing it for five to six years and nothing apparently seems to be happening, nothing visible, mm -hmm. not exteriorly. You said something interesting. I thought I want you to elaborate on it says, well, maybe you should take a pause. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was talking about that, I think we can get into our groove where it's like, 
I am dedicated to praying for this, right? And often we start with the praying because it's something that we want. It's our desire. We have a desire for it for whatever reason, you know, maybe it's because we're hurting and we want to stop hurting or we see somebody else is hurting and we want to take away their pain. Yes. There's, there's all sorts of reasons why we have desires that we initially start praying for somebody. Um, maybe they've asked us to pray for them. And so now we've decided that I've made this commitment, so I've got to stick to it come heck or high water, you know? When we prayed and prayed and prayed in the same groove and we're not seeing anything, sometimes we need to take the pause and ask ourselves, Lord, I'm praying for what I want. Am I praying for what I ought? Because in discernment, in a, in a conversation with the Lord, he may show us that what we're asking for isn't really what we should be asking for. You know, especially if it's based in our own desire and not in a discernment of what God's desire is. What's his will? Right. And you brought up Christ in Gethsemane and him praying in his human will, Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Not my will, Lord, but yeah. your will. You know, I think that's the ultimate example right there is, is one of the ways that we should be praying, whether it's for ourselves or for others, is mm -hmm. is in that particular way because it, it really acknowledges the omnipotent, ad, omnipotence of God and his will. And, and that's why I like to cling to that phrase, Lord, I love your will above all things. Sometimes I, it's hard coming out of my mouth to say that mm -hmm. because there's difficult things in this world. So hard, you know, like the loss of a child, you know, or yeah. uh, illness, really bad illness and, and addiction and, and things like that. There's a lot of really hard things. And, and we know God does want to heal us. Um, but sometimes he's like, it's not a no, it's just a not yet. Right. And, or not that, mm. you know, because he knows what is best for us. And so, you know, I've, I've said before on this show that sometimes the Lord can't give us even things he wants to give us because it'll confirm us in a lie. Mm. So if we've gotten to a place of Lord, I can only believe that you love me or I can only trust that you have power. If you do this, oh, if gosh. you show me this given a condition, yeah, there's that's, a conditional <laughs> thing. And so if the Lord gives that to you, that will then confirm you in that place. It's not going to move you out of that place and be like, okay, I can trust you now. You did that for me. Mm. He doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want your faith to be conditional. And so he may withhold even the good gifts he wants to give because we are kind of clinging to something that's not healthy for us and it's going to confirm us in a lie. But another thing I want to bring up is we talked about Christ in Gethsemane, which is like the end of his ministry. Let's go to the beginning of his ministry when he's in the desert with the enemy and the enemy is tempting him to pray for things. See that stone? Pray that it'll turn into a loaf of bread. You're starving. You need that. Clearly, you need that. You're starving. It's a good. It's a good. Yeah. Why wouldn't the Lord want to give you that? Pray for that. And the Lord's like, man does not live by bread alone. So what he's acknowledging is there are greater things than the physical desire I have. There are greater things maybe than the emotional desire I have. There are greater things than the thing I feel like I'm going to die if I don't get. There are greater things than even those. And the Lord knows what they are. And so if we enter into prayer in this place that is like, I got to have it. Sometimes the lack of an answer is actually a better answer to prayer. And again, you know, the enemy says, cast yourself down from this parapet. And because, you know, it's said that, you know, 
you'll be saved. You know, like the angels will mount you up. And the Lord says, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. And so again, sometimes we tempt the Lord with our desires, our prayers to say like, you know, Lord, I'm not going to believe in you if you don't do this for me, Mm. you know, or, or, you know, Megan, sometimes it may not even be spoken. No, no. I think most of the time it isn't. Okay. I want to clarify that. Most of the time it totally isn't. Or maybe it's like, Lord, I want to show your power. Like, let me show your power. So do this to show your power. And the Lord's like, can you believe in my power if I don't do that? Does my power have to look a certain way for it to be real? And so there's all these places that the Lord refines us as we continue to seek him refines our understanding of who he is, our understanding of the level of our trust and also our understanding of our lack of perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because how many times, you know, okay. Have you ever heard the Keith, uh, not Keith green, sorry. Um, Garth Brooks song. uh, Thank God for unanswered prayers. Right. When you look back in life and you recognize, you know what? I was praying for something like really vehemently. I wanted it so badly and the Lord didn't give it to me. But then like 10 years later, I look back and I realized, oh my goodness, I'm so glad he didn't answer that prayer because yeah. he gave me something so much better that I would never have even right. thought. Yeah. Yeah. So to follow the line of the song, it's the Garth Brooks songs. I know exactly what you're talking about is he, it was, it's actually, it was a romance. Yeah. 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 And, and so when that romance fell apart, he eventually got something so much better and it's much a better um, r- right. relationship, which I think is, is very common because I mean, mm-hmm. we talk about relationships in general and things don't work out, yeah. um, but God's got something better planned. And one of the things I say when things don't go the way we want them to is perhaps this is God's protection on you. Yeah. That's absolutely a beautiful way to so look try at and it. Look at other things right. that God might be up to. Like again, turn your face towards things of uh, heaven and mm-hmm. away from the things of earth. Yeah. And I think that when we get to that point where we can say in the moment, you know, Lord, this is so deeply the desire of my heart. I feel like I I want this so badly, like the pain of this circumstance impacts me so much. I can't see that there could be another thing that could be better than this. Like, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Like acknowledge the truth of that, that reality And then if you can speak to him and say, but I understand that your vision is so much beyond mine, that your ways are beyond our ways. Your understanding is higher than our understanding. I acknowledge that Lord. So while this desire is still deep in my heart and I do ask for it, help me not to cling to it. He's not asking us to relinquish the desire completely. He's just asking us to trust that there could be something that we're not seeing that may really more truly, more deeply, more eternally answer the desire of your heart. There's one more trap that we can fall into, Megan, that I want you to to address a little bit. And that is that in the aspect of prayer doesn't matter. So I'm going to stop praying because God's going to do what God's going to do. Mm-hmm. So what's the point of prayer? And that, like really, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God put everything in motion. He knows how things are going to go. And um, I think that's, I mean, I fall victim to that at yeah. times. So why don't you address that one? Well, for me, that has a really clear answer. That only happens if you think your prayer is about accomplishing something outside of building a relationship with the Lord. Mm. Do I stop talking to my best friend about what's going on in my heart because she can't do anything about it? Yeah. No, I don't. Because to share my heart with my friend blesses me and it, builds our relationship because we know each other better and we can love each other in those places that are difficult, even if we can't do anything about it. Now, God can do things about it. Absolutely. But we're not coming to him just because he can do something about it. We should be coming to him because we love him and we want to share our heart with him. We want him to be part of every aspect of our lives. You know, 
that's a clarification I think they make is like there, and this is a good point because I, I think it's so very important. Um, the relational prayer with the Lord is quite different than an intercessory prayer because I'm generally mm-hmm. talking about intercessory. Please help this conversion for this person or healing for this person, mm-hmm. which is ho- wholly different than um, that relation, that relational prayer, which I'm coming to find the longer I'm on the planet, people don't really have a lot of that to, to get to know the mm-hmm. relationship of the Lord and have that type of prayer. Yeah. I want to challenge you in a place here where you're saying it's wholly different and separate because I don't think it is really, I think that they're inextricably linked. Why are you praying for that intercessory prayer? Why? For love of another soul. Right. Okay, why is your love for another person something that's separate from your love for God and your relationship with God? Why do you tell me about your grandchildren? I don't know them. I've never met them. Why are you telling me your desires for them? Because you want me to know your heart. Mm -hmm. So when you enter into intercessory prayer for somebody, your heart is moved towards them, towards their good, towards charity towards them. And you want to share that with the divine lover of your soul so that he knows what's important to your heart. And the reality is this. He already knows. Not only that he already knows, the only reason you are capable of charity is because he's given it to you as a gift. Right, right. He's already involved. Mm. It's not separate. Mm, I still do see it separate. I don't know why. The different ways to pray. Maybe we need to do an episode on that. Ways to pray. Yeah. Types of prayer. I think I'm just coming more and more to this this idea that like everything is about the relationship with him. It is. It, everything. Indeed. And nothing's separate Agreed. from it. Nothing's distinct from it. And it, okay. that just okay. infuses everything. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, why do I you know, we talk about adoration and intercession and thanksgiving and the, all these different types of Limited, prayer, right? Yeah. Okay, why am I adoring him? Because I love him and we are in relationship. Why do I thank him? Because he's done such good for things for me in our relationship. <laughs> why am I ask, asking him things? Because I know he loves me and he wants to give me good things and he, att- he cares about my heart and he wants to know my needs and desires. Like, it's all about the relationship. And I think the problem is, is that when we start separating it, I can do this kind of prayer over here. The relationship stuff, that's its own thing. You divorce what's over here from its power if it's not rooted in relationship. Mm. Like, let's talk about our kids, for example. Those children exist because of the relationship between us and our spouse. Right. They don't exist without that relationship. Right. And the more that that the love we pour into our children is rooted in the relationship of that marital union, the more it will bless, the more fruit it will bear. If we try to love our kids in isolation from our spouse, it loses something. The spouse of our soul is the same. And all our desires are simply the children that are meant to be born of the relationship with the Lord. So then again, if you're not starting everything with relationship, you might start to bear illegitimate children. Hmm. Desires that are not rooted in the relationship with God in which case he's not going to want to answer those prayers for you because they're not going to help you. Yeah. That's really how I've come to look at it. I'll definitely be taking this to prayer. (laughs) We'll see how (laughs) to to your relationship. Yeah, Yeah. because I've always, I felt like one is a lot stronger than the other Mm -hmm. and that he knows my heart well. And I do pray for those other things because of I'm broken hearted, mm-hmm. you know, and mostly it's the conversions that I pray for that, you know, it's, a, it's like year after year after year. And that's yeah. what, I mean, I'm getting to the point where I'm like, that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, that's and sometimes okay, that's God's plan. Right. So say we're talking about like the will thing, like the, another person's human will. Yeah. So you're talking about conversion. That's really big, big into play. 
one of the things that the prayer can do, the Lord's not going to overwhelm that person's free will. If they are obstinately opposed to his grace, he's not going to force it on them. And you can't change that. And he won't change that because mm -hmm. that's his love, which is free. But what he can do is every time you seek him in that place of intercessory prayer, he can console your heart in the pain that he also feels. Even more so. Even yeah, more so. Right. And so then again, it becomes that relationship. It mm. says, you know, I know you want his conversion. More I know me. you want mm -hmm. it, but you don't want it any more than I do. Let's be together in our suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Let's console each other's hearts. And that's beautiful. Yeah. And that's powerful and it's meaningful. And what that does in your life, the way you suffer with the Lord in that place. Maybe the one thing that then ends up changing the heart of the other person. You never know. Never know. Yeah. No, that one, one person has no clue. It's interesting because two people that I pray for, for conversion all the time, the Lord um, encouraged me several years ago to start praying in Thanksgiving for their conversion. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally 15, like 12 preemptively? years. Yeah. Preemptively uh -huh. with so much certitude that it will happen. Um, and that's given me a lot of peace and comfort um, that whatever God wants, you know, whatever God wills. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course he wills their ultimate conversion, but I always feel like he says to me and says, you know, I've got them. I've yeah. got them. Well, and I think also to acknowledge, you know, Lord, I'm praying for these things with charity and love and trust in you. I don't have to see it. I don't have to right. see it. You know, maybe it's going to happen in a way that's totally obscure to me. It's not about one's yeah. own gratification of having seen the prayer answered, but only that God's will be right. done. Right, right. And so when we talk about conversion specifically, because that's that I guess is the one that um, can take years and years and years and mm -hmm. never see a result. Sure. Um, again, we don't know at the moment of death what all that's going to be like as well. Um, but there's the other side of that too. If a conversion doesn't actually happen, um, we shouldn't be afraid of God's justice on that person, yeah. which I think is another way to look at it that changed my heart a lot mm -hmm. that, you know, if someone really consistently does not choose Jesus as the way, the truth and the life, um, that is his justice that will rain down on them. And I love his justice. Mm -hmm. So let not my heart be troubled. Yeah. I, and I have come to that conclusion at times as well. Yeah, and I think that's important. It really does get down to that trusting in the goodness of the Lord, right. that he truly, he is good. He loves us. He wants good things for us. And and mm. so to really dwell in that place of trust. And I'll also say, sometimes I think maybe we need to get a little more specific in our prayers in the sense of, you know, instead of saying, I want to see this person converted or I want to see this healing or whatever, you say it, instead of maybe being so broad, be like, Lord, I pray that if there is a moment when this person's soul is open to receiving your grace, that you will rush in there with your Holy Spirit in that moment. Or I pray for them in the moment of their death that they will have a softness to your invitation. Like to like really pick specific moments to pray about instead mm -hmm. of like the more global thing. Okay. Because uh, sometimes uh, those little things can be encouraging because you don't expect to see it, right? You don't expect to see, uh, oh, in the person's interior, they had a little moment of softness that they then allowed some grace to leak in. Like, you don't know that you're going to see that. But if you're praying for that, you even if you don't see anything, you can kind of rest in this reality that, that he has attended to that. Uh, so maybe kind of. I see what you're saying. No, it's piecemeal. being much more specific in yeah. your prayer too. Right. I, yeah. I can see that. I can really see that. It'll make differences along mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. So I don't know. Any, any other thoughts? I, the perseverance. I mean, this is also a time to really practice that virtue of perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, God loves them so much more than you do. And stay faithful and persevere. Right. And I would just say, you know, since I'm really saying that I really feel like relationship is totally the key to all of this. When you're 
when you're struggling with discouragement, even hopelessness in your prayers, intentions, bring that to the Lord. Be honest. Yes. Say, Lord, I feel hopeless. I feel like this is never going to be answered. Or I don't think I can pray anymore about this because I'm just so discouraged. Talk to him about it. And don't be afraid to ask for what you need from the Lord in order to continue interceding for the needs of others. Right, right. And that okay. will build relationships. That's right. That's beautiful. I, I do have one kind of fun note to leave us on, on this beautiful um, episode on prayer. Um, during my prayer time in the last couple of weeks, I had this really strong sense of one of the best ways to pray for people. You ready? I'm ready. It really speaks to God's nature and our nature too, to pray for spiritual, physical, and emotional healing, mm -hmm. a deep healing. Because, you know, if we have that concupiscence and our woundedness, that if we pray into that healing and start of trying to reduce the woundedness in the, those that we love, that, that we pray to Christ to help aid in that reduction the natural virtue will then raise out from there. So mm -hmm. that's comforted me a lot when I feel like I don't know what to pray for this, my children in particular. I don't know what to pray for, for my husband, what for my kids. Um, prayers of protection and healing has definitely been kind of a real go-to. It's like yeah, one size fits all, man. Yeah, and I think the only thing I would add to that is as you're praying for their healing to add, pray that they may be healed so that they can receive just how much they are loved by you, God. Exactly, yeah. Because that understanding is the beginning of everything. Right. Amen. All right. Well, we pray that you know God's love and that he's there for you and he's listening to those prayers and he is attending to you and desiring your good in all things. So if you know somebody who's discouraged in prayer or has really been praying for something for a long time and doesn't seem to have gotten an answer, we hope that maybe you'll consider sharing this with them, uh, that it will bless them. And uh, we hope that you will join us next time. And until then, I hope you remain united with us in prayer. Thanks. God bless. God bless.